Body positivity and the fat acceptance movement have made waves online. We've seen no shortage of content surrounding fat phobia, fat acceptance, and what that means in 2022, which has caused people to ask a lot of self-reflective questions. Am I fat phobic? Are my actions fat phobic? And is how I treat my body, such as wanting to lose weight, fat phobic? And it's time to explore. Are we asking the right questions or getting distracted from a real systemic issue? So something that's recently been receiving, I feel like a lot more attention than usual is body positivity. And potentially it's not really more than usual and maybe it's only now kind of slipped into my purview because I can't speak for anyone else's timelines, but mine have been inundated with gym talk. And they're a whole brand of interesting by themselves. I think naturally though, because of the rise of so much gym and fitness type content online, there's going to be a response. We have the majority and we have the opposition. I'm not, I'm not saying, which, saying is which. which is which. And I think I think it's a super interesting topic because I feel like it's something that people are arguing back and forth about a lot that doesn't have a correct answer or an end goal. Like all the fitness people are coming after the fat acceptance people and fat acceptance people are coming after the fitness bros. But ultimately I do wonder if we're focusing too much on interpersonal conflicts with each other and not enough on the big picture. And that's why jumping into this video I want to discuss fat phobia, fat acceptance, body positivity, and the overarching question of is weight loss fat phobic. <laughs> important to start with a definition of fat phobia. In its most objective definition, I would say it's a fear of fatness, whether that's on yourself or other people. In a more systemic definition, it's to do with kind of the way fat people are generally disenfranchised in our society, in the way that a lot of the spaces that we live in are not set up to accommodate larger bodies. And body positivity has some roots in the fat rights movement of the 1960s. It was a movement fighting for the rights of fatter bodies and eventually kind of evolved into what we have now that we kind of call body positivity. However, a lot of the ideals of what we have under body positive now also encompass a lot of the ideals of fat acceptance. Body positivity also in an interesting way moved into body neutrality, which moves away from trying to love every aspect of your body and trying to accept every aspect of your body to simply being neutral about a lot of your body. Kind of just acknowledge a body's a body, it's doing what it needs to do to get me through this long capitalistic hell of a life. And there's no need to feel super positive or negative about it. It's just doing its goddamn best. Aren't we all? And I think on social media at least where there was a separation between fat acceptance and body positivity has a lot to do with it being also filled with thinner, able-bodied, white people. On a surface level, it kind of does seem like this would be for anybody. Anyone can feel positive about their body. And I think because of this discussion is why we eventually end up with a separation of body positivity and fat acceptance. Fat acceptance is a lot more focused on, as the name suggests, uh, fat acceptance. Fat acceptance is a general overarching understanding that fat bodies deserve all the same rights to respect that every other body does. However, when unpacking the question, is weight loss fat phobic, we then split into even more camps. Hella camps. But is it camp? Ask yourself. And the first thing we start to do is unpack the question of health and do we glorify being overweight when we move into body positivity and fat acceptance. Now, the thing about the health argument is that despite the fact that people go back and forth fighting with each other a lot about it, it can be right, wrong, and fat phobic kind of all at the same time. Because it is right that you can't necessarily always link someone's weight to their health because there's a lot of limits to this. Usually what we're talking about when it comes to health is the percent of fat you have on your body because having too much fat, particularly visceral fat around your abdominal area can lead to a bunch of health issues. That being said, a lot of these health issues can appear in people without excessive amounts of visceral fat in their abdominal area. Thinner people and thinner bodies can still have all these health ailments. It's something that does increase risk, but a lot of things increase risk for a lot of things. Because never forget, y'all, we're all filled with C4 and microplastics. Never forget. Also, of course, when it comes to the conversation of weight, we all understand that weight is not necessarily even a good indicator of how much fat you have on your body. If you're looking at people's body compositions, then people who are super buff might step on that scale. And that number might be kind of high. But obviously, no one's going to look at that person and have an issue with their health based on their weight, because it's obvious that despite the fact that that number is high, they don't necessarily have a lot of fat. Also, you very much can have a higher percentage of fat on your body than maybe what would be healthy by average biometrics and still very much be totally healthy. All your various biometrics could be totally fine. And so because there's so much nuance to the conversation of size versus health, it is correct 
that you really cannot necessarily make an explicit assessment on someone's health strictly based on their size or their weight. It's wrong that the existence of the fat acceptance movement encourages people to be fat or promotes obesity. What does that even mean? I think the reason we have this idea is because we do so much promotion of being thin <laughs> that we just assume that anyone being happy in their size has to be a promotion, promotion of it. Because we can't be thin and stop promoting that shit. I don't think this sounds good, but I think that it is just true that we can still all see how fat people especially confident fat people tend to get treated we all see the comments we all see that they still struggle when it comes to transportation getting jobs we can all tell that there's still a lot of systemic issues that fat bodies deal with while we can enjoy confident fat people the thin industry has been doing its promo a lot better and a lot longer and thus kind of wins that battle i don't think the existence of fat people who don't care about being fat does not inherently encourage other people to be fat what it primarily primarily does potentially is allow people to love their bodies as it is as they are even if society might tell them that there's something wrong with it which again ultimately is not a bad thing because if you do care about someone's weight loss it's been proven time and time again that fat shaming and being mean and bullying people who are overweight doesn't work so ultimately fat acceptance does not encourage anyone to become fatter if they weren't already large and if anything if you happen to be interested in losing weight the positivity surrounding your body and having a general more body positive attitude could lead you down a much different journey when it comes to discovering health and fitness and whatever that means for you and however that manifests for you and it can still be fat phobic to care that much about someone's health that you don't know now hear me out for a second with this one i know that i said at the top but yes sometimes excess amounts of fat can be something that impacts someone's health negatively but i'm gonna be honest about something here that i think that if most of us really sat with this for a second you feel the same way how often have you been out in a boot and gave a shit about a total stranger's health i'll give you a minute if you selected never you'd be right and here's the thing i know that there's some martyrs out there you know people who work in healthcare, nurses hairdressers who might care about the well-being of strangers that they've never met and to you cheers but to the rest of the assholes on this website myself included let's be fucking real you don't give a shit about a total stranger's health you don't care and neither the fuck do i because let's keep it a buck how often if ever have you gone out into the real world and stopped a random person and asked them about their general health and well-being because it's high key an insane thing to do <laughs> You've never done that because in my humblest opinion, generally speaking, we don't care that much about strangers. We really don't. If you have done that, but the only types of people that you've ever been inclined to do that for have been overweight people, then what drew you to care about their health was their weight. Because you would never approach a random smaller bodied person and be like, hey, do you smoke? Just want to check in on your health and wellness and make sure that you don't smoke because cigarettes can be kind of bad for you. Have you ever gone up to someone with crutches or in a cast and be like, hey, how are you doing? But you simply don't ask because for the most part it's free to mind your business <laughs> which is why despite the fact that we can acknowledge that there could be some health implications it's a little weird that you only care so much about the health of fat people it does bring into question your intention behind only seeming to care and ask or approach or comment on the health of fat people we also see it all the time we see very thin people on here making insane food combinations and eating gross things that none of us would ever think to comment on or care about the fact that they're healthy or not because they're not large not to mention if you really do care about the health of morbidly obese people with a little bit of googling you find out that there is a huge correlational link between being morbidly obese and suffering some pretty intense childhood abuse. So really and truly, if you're super concerned about the health of obese people, you'd want to be asking them about how they're doing and how they're unpacking childhood trauma, which also would be kind of an insane thing to ask somebody, especially someone you don't know. But before you tell somebody to go to the gym and eat less, honest to God, if you really are so concerned about their health, the main thing that you want to be encouraging them to do would be head to therapy. How many obese people have you asked about their childhood? None. <laughs> Well, I got some news for you, kid. So when we start to look into the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to fat phobia, we can ask ourselves, is weight loss, intentional weight loss, just for the purpose of getting skinny, fat phobic? And the answer is 
kind of. Because in the most literal understanding of the word fat phobic, sure, a fear of fatness would be fat phobic. Someone wanting to lose weight, I guess, strictly for aesthetic purposes. Sure, you could say that's fat phobic. If someone wants to decrease their overall weight or fat percentage on their body, because based on what they know of themselves, it'll improve their overall health and well-being, then I personally wouldn't say so. However, we do tend to understand most of the phobias and isms that we talk about more contextually than literally. We don't usually have conversations about most of our phobias and isms that literally because they usually end up being quite narrow-sided. If you go by the literal definition of racism as someone who believes they're superior to someone else because of their race, then it's kind of easy to miss a lot more subtle systemic issues that actually have the daily impact that it does. While racism is and can be that overt and explicit and literal, a lot of times it won't manifest this way. Not saying most of the time, not saying some of the time, just saying a lot of the more day-to-day -day impacts that we have with the isms and phobias aren't usually as you know what I mean? We wouldn't limit fat phobia to the literal fear of being fat. We speak about it in terms of systemic issues, which is why I wonder if the question is weight loss fat phobic is useful to just try and chalk up to yes or no. Because systemically we understand that fat phobia usually manifests in fat people not getting jobs, having less access to a lot of things that smaller bodies do, but interpersonally we see it manifest in different ways. Understanding your own internalized ideas about fatness is beneficial to you. It can very much influence how you go about your health and fitness journey if you want to go on one. Because maybe it'll make you realize that I don't know that I want to lose weight, maybe I just want to be built like me. This is incredible. Unpacking this as well could very well influence the way that you treat other people because obviously how we feel about ourselves usually impacts pretty heavily how we treat others. So unpacking these feelings within yourself can be healthier for you. It could very much allow you to unpack possibly disordered eating patterns you have, unpack the way you treat yourself and your body, unpack the way that you treat other people with larger bodies, and be a net positive for you on an individual level, which is never a bad thing. However, when we talk about systemic fat phobia, I wonder if all it serves to do is police people's individual decisions in a way that's not really large-scale helpful because as i said it can never be a bad thing to unpack your own personal biases especially when it comes to how you treat your own body but it is just that it's how people treat their own bodies i say that it could potentially be unproductive because while it might not be intentional i think it reads as very much trying to police the decisions that people make on their own bodies and there's just absolutely nothing to be done about that there's nothing to be done about someone bleaching their hair about someone getting a piercing about someone going under the knife to change their nose if that's what they want to do we make a lot of aesthetic decisions every single day that don't necessarily benefit us in terms of health but are just strictly aesthetic and we do them all the time anyway sometimes they're bad for our health sometimes they're life risking sometimes they're health neutral but ultimately people make a lot of decisions that are strictly aesthetic and i just think there's very little to do about that if someone has decided that they want to be built like mrs incredible i'm not talking about myself i'm not there's just nothing to be done about that so i wonder if it's just more useful for us to focus on unpacking larger systemic issues that hold back fat people versus on trying to police individual decisions that people make with their own bodies. So then where does that leave us? In body positivity, fat acceptance, body neutrality, are, are we all fat phobic? What's left? I think we see them as one or the other or even synonymous to each other, but I think they kind of work more like stepping stones to the other. They're kind of intrinsically linked despite the fact that they're not necessarily synonymous. Because you can't really have one without the other. Body positivity, I think, was kind of the catalyst for all of this because it's the first one that most of us were served. And ultimately, while we were all learning a lot about body positivity, eventually we got moved into body neutrality and fat acceptance and understanding fat phobia. Unpacking your fat phobia if you're not necessarily a fat person, fat acceptance, or body neutrality. I don't think it's a bad thing for everyone to take on the understanding that we should be making society comfortable for most people. Because if any of your arguments behind not making things more accessible is, oh, well, companies will lose profit if they make larger clothes or anything capitalistic, I don't want to hear it. Because personally, I will never prioritize a billionaire's drop of additional profit over the comfort of other human beings. But as for where it stands for you interpersonally, there's a lot of roads that people take. People remain body positive and do learn to feel positive about their body all the time some people are able to move into body neutrality and decide i'm just going to kind of let my body be a body other people might be able to uncover their own personal fat phobia and maybe change their minds about dieting not dieting or still decide to lose gain weight
weight, whatever, it's strictly for aesthetic purposes, and also unpack the way that they treat themselves and larger people within their interpersonal interactions. Ultimately, we end up with a mixture of all of them or two of them. I don't know. We don't end up, it's not a perfect science. <laughs> So what's the wrap up? What's the point of this video? Is weight loss fat phobic? Depends. However you choose to love your own body is up to you and unpacking fat phobia for yourself and others is always a net positive.